Hi everyone, in this electrostatic levitation tutorial I will show you how to use the global equations feature in COMSOL to find the exact voltage needed to keep a charged object in static equilibrium. You will need a 2D axisymmetric uh, model uh, and the electrostatics uh, physics interface under the AC-DC module and a stationary study. The geometry will be very simple. It will consist only with, uh, of an airspace and the levitating sphere. So under geometry, insert a rectangle. So the top edge will represent a plate which will be supplied with a high voltage and the lower edge will be uh, will represent a a grounded plate and insert a circle for the sphere the radius is one millimeter so the sphere is very small and I'll keep it at the center and we only need a semicircle so that's all for the geometry and for the materials nothing needs to be added we will uh, uh, assume that the sphere is made out of titanium, which has a relative permittivity of 1. Air also has a relative permittivity of 1. So under the physics, you can go to charge conservation. And under relative permittivity, you can select user defined. So instead of adding a material, you can just keep a value of 1 uh, in the physics. And COMSOL will not ask you to add a material in that case. So now you can go to physics, under boundaries, select ground. And for the top plate, select potential difference or electric potential. And we need to supply uh, an electric potential level which is sufficient to balance the weight uh, or the balance the weight of the sphere. We don't know what this voltage is, so this is what we are going to compute in this tutorial. Uh, we will add some charge to the sphere. So we will assume that the sphere is levitating in vacuum so that whatever extra charge is added to the sphere will not leak to the atmosphere. And finally, a global equations node. So before we use the global equations node, we need to define some variables. So under variables, right click, go to non-local couplings and add an integration operator. Select the semicircle. Right click on definitions and add variables. So we will add a variable for the mass of the sphere. So let's call it M. And M, uh, titanium has a density of 4,500 kg per meter cube. This will be multiplied by the volume, which we will get from the integration operator. So the integration operator will integrate over a revolved geometry to get the volume. So the input will be one. And you can see that the unit is in kilograms and we also need the weight, which is just the mass multiplied with the gravitational acceleration constant. In COMSOL, this is given by G underscore const new unit is a newton and then the force so by uh, we will denote it by f and the force is given by the dot product of the uh, electric field and the charge on this uh, on the sphere so the electric field is given by es dot ez which is the vertical component of the electric field multiplied by the 
charge, which is given by es dot r h o q. If you want to get this variable, uh, you can find it under the space charge density node. So if you expand it on, uh, and, you, and you go to equation view, you will see that COMSOL has defined it here. So this is the value that we have entered. And this is the variable that is defined by COMSOL. So you can copy this and use it anywhere else in the model. So the dot product of the charge with the electric, electric field gives a volumetric uh, force. So we need to integrate this force over the revolved geometry to get the total force. So again, use the integration operator. And after integration, you can see that the unit is now in newtons. So now we can go back to the physics and under global equations, uh, we will define the, uh, the unknown voltage by V0. So this is the variable that we need to find. This is the variable that we do not know. And under a function, we enter the uh, expression which needs to be satisfied. So we know in static equilibrium, the force, the electrostatic force exerted on the sphere will be exactly equal to the weight of the sphere. So we need these two quantities to exactly cancel out each other. So F minus W. So COMSOL will try to uh, find the value of V0 such that F minus W is equal to zero. This is the idea behind using the global equations. Uh, we do not need any initial conditions because this is a stationary study. So regardless of what you supply here, the final result will be the same. Uh, you can see that there is a message from COMSOL regarding the units. If you scroll down, you need to change the unit of the dependent variable, which is the voltage. So in this case, we know it is electric potential. So insert v and for the source term we know it's a force so type n n for newtons so that's all so v0 is a global variable and now we will insert v0 in the electric potential node That's all for the physics. For the mesh, we can keep it uh, physics controlled. Click on build all. And then on study and click compute. This is a small model, so the computation will be relatively very quick. Okay, so under results, you can insert a 2D plot. And you can plot the voltage variation, but we are interested in the voltage applied to the top plate. So under derived values, right click and go to global evaluation. So you can type in V0. This is the state variable that we have defined. And you can also check the value of the force and the value of the weight. So if you click on evaluate, you can see that COMSOL has found this value. So it's 11,032 volts. This is the voltage that needs to be applied at the top plate such that the force is equal to the weight. So you can see these two values are equal and they cancel out each other. So this, is what, this was a quick demonstration of how you could use global equations. It's a very uh, useful feature in COMSOL. Uh, this tutorial is part one. I will upload another tutorial, part two, in which I will use a time domain sim uh, simulation to show how you could uh, uh, control the, uh, the levitation of the sphere. So electrostatic levitation is unstable. So even if you supply the accurate level of voltage, the sphere will not be stable in its exact position. It will keep moving up and down. So we will need to add a PID controller and use a feedback loop to control 
the position of the sphere and make it stable. Uh, thank you everyone for watching this tutorial.